Hello and welcome. I have not been recording a lot of videos lately, and that's probably not immediately going to change, but uh, I have some time today. Happy Friday, and I thought I would do a quick one on round one of The Road to Las Vegas. It's Doggy Daycare by David Brown. Um, this is one I was on the live stream for, so I didn't do my usual record of my solve, and I, I took a look at the live stream, and you know, it's it's a lot of fun to watch the, the kind of back and forth, but it's hard to see what any one person is doing, so I thought I'd make a quick video explaining uh, my approach. So just a quick explanation of the case. Uh, we're in a doggy daycare, which is this 50 by 50 area. We've got some uh, brown spaces here, which are where there's food. We've got some blue spaces, which are where there's water. Uh, and we're going to have dogs moving around the daycare based on all these different uh, numbers and arrows. So, you know, four, uh, and this arrow means you go four spaces down and to the left. Uh, so from here to there, uh, and so on. Um, and so the first five or so level, yeah, the first five levels are all just sort of getting oriented, getting used to to using the directions, the starting locations, and so on. And then six, seven, and eight uh, are actually based in the grid, and you have dogs moving around, and you need to figure out when they eat. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else that needs to be mentioned up front. I don't think so. So I'm going to hit start on my timer and kick it off. So I'm going to start with the bonuses just like I did on the day. On the doggy daycare map, how many cells are in the feeding and bathing areas combined? So I've shown before that there are tricks um, for kind of finding and replacing by color, but when there's a small number of areas um, and they're all regular rectangles, I think just control clicking and then uh, just control enter to enter into all of them. So control click to highlight multiple areas and then control enter to enter into all those areas. So I'm just putting uh, w here and an f there and then we're good uh, and then i can just say count ifs uh, just select this whole area it doesn't matter that i'm including the numbers count ifs oops uh yeah well, i'll put w and f there in a second how many w how many f so the two together is 142 i'll be i think i just typed it in on the day but i'll be slightly more diligent and link it there so the next question one direction appears more than any other how many times does that direction appear in all movements given in all games exclude examples and exclude all directions without an associated movement amount so that just means here in level two it's saying how often does this direction occur we don't include that we only include ones with numbers so when you're excluding examples the, this case like i mentioned has eight levels um, that we need to to get through so the first thing i'm going to do is just uh, select down to the end put on a filter uh, and then I'm going to say here, uh, filter, I don't know, number filters, uh, less than or equal to, I'll just put in 200, because the levels go up to 160. And that will remove all the blanks and all the examples, because the examples are numbered something like example one, example two. Um, and those um, those values are less, uh, or sorry, are greater than any number. So then I'm just going to select all the way down to here. Um, and it's actually accidentally... Uh, widen me out already because I guess there's some merged header cells. It's a good idea to just zoom out quickly and just make sure that you do have out as far as the widest, which is usually the last level, but not always. So we're good there. Copy. I'm just going to make a new sheet. Uh, value paste all of those there. I'll just call it B for bonus. Um, so the first thing I'm interested in is the arrow that occurs most often. Um, so to get that, first I'm going to come here, copy my list of arrows, bring it down here, uh, remove duplicates. Could have just used unique, but that's fine. And just double check that I have count eight. So yes, I have all eight directions there. Um, the other thing, now that I have the data uh, grouped together like this with only the actual case data, I'm just going to do a check. Um, it, if you eyeball these, it looks like they're all one digit and one arrow. But if we check the maximum length, we can confirm that. And indeed, the maximum length is two. So for the rest of the case, I'm just going to assume the fact that there's only one um, but there's only one digit. So then to figure out how many times each arrow occurs, I can say count ifs. Um, the criteria range is going to be all this input data and how many times is that? Um, so it, you can use a question mark as a wildcard for a single character and all this stuff. So that gives me the counts for each and I'm just interested in the max of those. Uh, I'll take the filter off here again now and zoom back in. Uh, and then we'll say max of these. Okay, then the next uh, question, cross levels five to eight, what is the sum of the row numbers and column numbers for all the starting cells? So that's just these three.
three levels here that actually have uh, addresses. Uh, wait, sorry, five to eight. So, yeah, that's all the ones that have addresses, fine. Uh, so I'm just going to copy those <clears throat> and bring them down here. And then the easiest way to get an uh, address out of this, or to, to get a row and column number out of this, is to say uh, column of indirect of this plus row of indirect of that. So I'm interested in the sum of the row and the column number across them all. Uh, back up to the top to put it in. Sum all of this. Okay. And then the last two are related to levels level five and level eight. So we'll pause on those and come back to them later. So on the main levels, the first kind of main thing that, that I think sort of allowed me to do this faster than most other people um, is that I did it almost everything up to level five. I did only in single cell array formulas. They weren't hugely complicated ones, uh, but um, it, it did mean that I could kind of scale my formulas a lot faster. And one of the things that I noticed right away is that all these questions, this just asks, you know, sum up the numbers. Uh, this one asks, you know, how many times does it, this direction occur? This one asks, you know, how many squares in total you you travel? This one asks how far away from your starting point you end up, that kind of thing. All of these are not dependent on the order of the inputs, and we, we're not interested in, in any of the interim steps. So in other words, if we want to figure out how far did we get after taking these five steps, we don't need to know where we were after one step, two step, three step, four steps, uh, and, and hence the order of them is not important. We just need to know the total amount of movement. So the way that I went about this was first, you're going to want to have a lookup table. So I'm just going to call these R's, uh, uh, and then I'm going to have uh, a tag for the up-down movement, and a, or I guess I'll call it the, for the row movement, and a tag for the column movement. Um, so in this case, if you go up, that's decreasing the row count by one. That's going up as well. That's staying flat. That's going down, increased by one, increased by one, increased by one, zero, and decreased by one. And then the column number uh, zero for this one because it's going straight up. This one's going to the right, which is plus one, right, plus one, plus one, zero, and then these three are all minus one going to the left. Um, so I guess I'll, I'll call this like row shift maybe. Uh, row sh and cl sh. Okay, so now, uh, actually the first question didn't even need that. It's just going to be sum of minus minus uh, left. So you just take out the left piece of each of these uh, and minus minus to convert it into a number. That's pretty straightforward. Uh, how many times does the dog move in this given direction? So that's going to be count ifs. This is a question mark and that. Um, if you wanted to allow for multi-digit numbers, you could change that to a star and then that would, let's just see, find a down arrow. That would still work if this was 14, uh, whereas the other formula would break. But again, it's, this is why I do a, a check at the start to see, okay, it looks like these are all one-digit numbers, but are they actually all? And in this case, they actually are, all are. So here, um, this is, you're interested in knowing the total number of squares the dog moves, where a diagonal move, uh, say from here to here, counts as two squares. So it's think, think about a diagonal as up and right, in other words, or down and left or whatever. Um, so here, I just want to add one more thing to my arrow table, which is distance. Uh, and that can just be the sum of the absolute values of these. So in other words, where you're moving something in both directions, that's a two, uh, and where you're only moving in one direction, that's a one. And I'll just call that dist. So uh, let me just, the way I originally wrote this was like this. So I said first, uh, I'm gonna say minus minus left of this. That gives me the number. Then I'm gonna say x look up right of this in R's returning from dist. And then what I want is just to multiply these two together. So I could build a let so that I keep each of the parts separate, but this formula is simple enough that I don't really think I need to. So I'm just going to wrap all that in a sum. And sure enough, that gives me the 68. So then I'll cut that, bring it over here, and then fill down. And I'll get rid of these extra spaces I put in. Um, Okay, so then level four uh, is basically the same thing, except instead of being interested in how many steps you've taken, you want to know how far you are from where you started. Um, so quite similar, 
uh, I, I'm going to uh, bring this down here um, and just go to Alt E D, shift cells left. That'll uh, shrink the range that it's pointing to. Uh, get back to there. Uh, so now, what do I want to do with this? Well, uh, I want to uh, return here from row shift. Um, so here I'm. Okay, you know, sorry. Let me let me break it out for a moment first. So again, I'm going to say left of this times one, uh, and then I'm going to X look up the right of this in arrows, returning from uh, row shift. Oh, sorry, I didn't close the bracket after the right. Um, and then I'm going to do the same thing for looking it up in column shift. And then, so in other words, here I'm saying, uh, you know, I, I take two steps going down a row, I take three steps going up a row. So if I multiply this by this, that'll end up at one. And here I'm saying I take two steps going along a column, two steps going back, three steps going back, two steps going forward, two steps going back. So that should, I don't even remember, I lost track of where that's going to end me up. But that, yes, that gets me to minus three. Uh, and so here I'm interested in the absolute values of the two of those added together. Uh, so that's the idea. And then it's, again, relatively easy to just do that in one cell. So we'll just make this row shift, uh, wrap that sum in an absolute value. That gives me the three. And then the same thing for the column shift. So I'll just put down here so that it's easier to see the parallel. Uh, and that's it. That's level four. And then level five, I think was kind of similar. Oh yeah. Uh, so level five is the same thing, except this time you have a starting cell and you want to figure out your ending cell. Uh, so again, if you watched uh, the Excel World Cup bootcamp I did with Giles, uh, you'll know all about switching between um, between cell references and row and column numbers. So here, we don't need the abs anymore. We want to know the, the size of the change. Um, and this, this is starting to get a little bigger now, so I'm going to make this a let. So I'm going to say let, uh, I'll call it row change to distinguish from row shift that I had before. Not a great naming convention, but whatever it'll do. Um, then uh, this will be call change. Uh, it's going to be all that. Then uh, what I want is, just call it end up, where I end up, is going to be uh, offset from indirect of here. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, all these references to the arrows need to shift over by one, which would be easier if I deleted that reference first. Uh, shift, shift, shift. Uh, okay, so now we take indirect of here. We're going to offset from that by a uh, number of rows that is equal to row change and a number of columns that's equal to call change. Um, that's where we end up. And then we need to turn that uh, that cell reference back into an address. And the way to do that is address of uh, row of where we end up, column of where we end up, uh, and four to give me a relative reference because I don't want any dollar signs. Uh, okay, so that's the first uh, five levels. Um, and then that actually gives us also what we need to do uh, this bonus question. So here it asks if a dog starts in cell AAA 1000 and follows all the uh, movement directions in games 120 to 160, excluding the examples, what cell would it finish in? No, the dog would not leave the Excel sheet at any time. So here I'm just going to take the formula I have here. I'll put it over on my bonus tab, uh, put it there. And I think the cell was AAA 1000. Just double check. Yes, AAA 1000. So then I just need to change the references here. So where it starts from is here. Um, and then I need to replace each of these with uh, a reference to the relevant bits. So we said if it starts in that and follows all the movements in games 121 to 160, and that is, well, actually, yeah, they're, they're just in rows 121 to 160 here. So, mm -hmm. uh, so I'm just going to say to call of 121 to 160. Uh, and the reason I'm doing a to call is because I wanted to ignore blanks. Um, because I think my formula, as I've set it up, would not like it if I did not ignore blanks. And then I'm just going to find and replace this uh, with 
this, which is J163 hash. Hash, replace. And that gives me AHD909, which sounds kind of familiar. Let's see. And it is right. OK, good. So that's sort of the pretty much the logical halfway mark. Um, then the, the rest of the case was, it was three different levels, but it's three different levels of a pretty similar question. So let's talk about the idea first. So same, similar to level five, you've got a starting location and a series of movements. Uh, but now those movements take place in this grid here, the doggy daycare. Uh, and so we're interested in, in kind of interacting with, first with just where we end up getting food, then on another one where we end up in the water, and then on another one where we go out of bounds. So let's talk about each of those three separately. So first, uh, first on this one, on level six, we're told uh, they move around, they will never move outside the doggy daycare borders. That, that actually was not quite right. There were a couple of these, I think the example and one of the others, where they would move outside uh, the border. Um, but uh, anyway, that was not, not meant to be part of this level. Um, and you're just interested in on which turn numbers are they eating food. So in other words, if they start here and then go one to the right and then go one up and then go two to the right and then go one down and then go two up, then you know on their second and fifth turn or whatever that was, they're eating food. So you just you want the sum of the turn numbers on which food is being eaten. Uh, and that, that is the answer that you need on level six, level seven, and level eight. So level seven, the change is that now there's, uh, there's a concept of a bath. So the first time that they enter the bath area, which is this uh, blue area, um, they take a bath and they skip the next two turns of movement. Uh, so that's that's the bath, and then uh, on the last level, uh, they also get a boost in energy when they eat food. So if they eat food, uh, and their next movement was going to be uh, two steps in a certain direction, you double that, so they end up taking four steps in a certain direction. So, having said all that, uh, let's think. The thing to do at this stage is to set up a model. Uh, oops, model model. Uh, and we'll start with example six. Um, now, th again, the, the thing that I think helped me out in this case is that I looked at six, seven, and eight, and I saw that they were basically flavors of um, of the same challenge, uh, and so I, I built it that way. So here I'm going to say uh, x match this against here, so that I can bring in the data. So match it against column B. So uh, first of all, I'm going to bring in the level because uh, I want certain conditions to only apply depending on what level we're in. Uh, so I'm going to say index on it's this column here, C, that has the level, C, C, uh, by B1. Uh, then I'm going to need the data. Now, the, the data is wider in some uh, levels than others. So there's 20 moves here, there's 20 moves here, but down in the last level there are 100 moves. <clears throat> so uh, what I'm going to do is index. Uh, on the widest of them, which is the 100 moves. Uh, sorry, I lost, so that's from H to DC, and then when I uh, control space to select the whole column, it widens it because there are merged cells. Uh, so the row number is going to be B1, uh, the column number is going to be 0. Uh, that gives me all this, but also a bunch of zeros, and then I'm going to wrap that in a two row, uh, sorry, a two call, because I want to have it going down the columns, uh, and ignore blanks. And that now gives me just 20 steps uh, for here. Okay. So then uh, I want steps. Uh, <clears throat> I want my row shift, my call shift. So here this is going to be minus minus left of this. And here this is going to be xlookup right of this uh, in arrows returning from uh, row shift. And same thing for the column shift. Yeah. Um, actually, I'm just I'm going to call this raw. I'm call this raw because to implement the thing about not moving for some turns in level seven and about moving extra for some turns in level eight, I'm going to just add a multiple here, um, and I'm just going to say. Uh, well, I'm just going to start that off as all ones, uh, and then I can change that later. Um, but for level six, I just need all ones. So then, 
Now I'm interested in the row and column that I'm actually in. Um, and the starting point for this will be, uh, well, I guess I need here, I'm going to index, uh, the start is in column G, uh, by V1. And then I need a row of indirect of this, and I need a column of indirect of this. So then my, uh, my new row, after I make this move, is going to be the row plus the number of steps times the shift in the row direction times the multiple. Uh, is that everything? Yes. Yes. Uh, and then the column, similarly, is going to be uh, the number of steps times the uh, column shift times the multiple plus the previous column. Uh, and then for the last level, we're told that the bigger moves, the kind of double speed moves, might have the dog attempt to go outside uh, the area. And if if they do attempt to sort of end up out here, say, then we snap them back to the closest point within the pen. And so a great way to model that in a, in a sort of simple way is just with the median function. So that the, you can see the column number. Uh, actually, you can't see because I'm too zoomed out and they look uh, blurred out. But so you can see here the column number is always between 2 and 51, and the row number is also always between 2 and 51. So the way that I can simply model that is to say median of this 2 and 51. So in other words, if it's less than 2, I'll take 2. If it's more than 51, I'll take 51. Uh, but otherwise, I'll take wherever that ends up and then do the same thing here. And you can see that the the sort of effort involved here of adding a multiple, adding a median, even though those don't apply to level 6, is not that much. The effort, comparatively speaking, of coming back later and editing to add those in, in my opinion at least, is, is quite a bit more. So that's the row and column. Uh, then I'm interested in, uh, I guess, contents, I'll just call it. So for this, in other words, if I'm in whatever, row 6, column 6, I want to know that I'm eating food. So I could do this by um, by feeding the row and column number into the address function. Uh, that gives me a cell name, and then feeding that into the indirect to, to find the contents of here. Uh, or I can just take an index uh, of this range. Actually, you know what? It's going to be easier to just include the row and column headers so that I can, if I start from here, then what is called row 2, column 2, is actually row 1, column 1 of the area, uh, and so I'd have to subtract 1 off everything, but if I just do it like this, then it works fine. Without that, so then my row is G3 and my column is H3. Uh, and so you can see here right away we take a, a bath on the first turn. So now, uh, let's see, level 6, I don't think I have to do anything, um, so I'm just interested in which turns food gets eaten. Uh, that's saying no food gets eaten. That is not good because some food is supposed to get eaten. So maybe something is wrong here. Let's see. In example six, the dog starts an AO7. On turn one, the dog moves. And so, all right, just for the sake of debugging, I'm going to put in an address here. Uh, that's going to be address of row number, column number, and four. So they start an AO7. Uh, then they move up to AQ5. Uh, the next two turns, AO5 and AL8. Uh, sorry, over here, AO5, AL8, yes. Uh, after continuing on, oh, you know, I just realized I probably didn't lock. Isn't that what I did? Yes, it is. I didn't lock. Silly, silly, silly. Okay. So now that's better. So continuing on in this way, uh, on turns that looks like 13 and 14, I'm going to get food. Uh, yes. Okay, good. That's better. Um, so then I also want my uh, turn number. That's just going to be sequence rows of that. So that'll grow to 100 when the other one grows to 100. Um, so then I'm interested in sum of if. And for this one, I'll just go all the way down to 100. So J4 to J103. Uh, if that is equal to F, then give me the same thing here, down to 103. Uh, and then I want a sequence. So let's see, the level numbers go from 101 to 160. So I want a sequence of 60 numbers starting from 101. Uh, and my input is game name. 
And so that'll calculate. Take a little while. Okay. Let's see if we're good here. Uh, I will say I have uh, I have sort of doctored the uh, answer file. So this one here, as far as I remember, is the one that goes out of bounds. So in the original answer file, the answer to that is not one. Uh, but that does also involve the dog, I think, going to sort of here and then back somewhere or something. And so if you adjust for them coming back in, it changes where they get food. Uh, but like I said, I've adjusted my answer file for that. Okay, so that's level six. Then level seven, the twist we have to add is the bath, which just means that uh, this multiple needs to change. So now I'm going to say if, uh, let's just say choose, yeah, choose. So the level is going to be six, seven, or eight. So we'll say choose that minus five. So if it's one, I want one. Uh, if it's two, then we're on level, actually, sorry, the level seven condition is going to carry over to level eight. So that wasn't the right way to do it. So we just say if this equals six, then one. Otherwise, if it's seven, uh, sorry, I started this off badly. Uh, I should really have worked out the first bath first. Um, because you only you only stop after the first bath, so uh, first first bath. Uh, that's going to be uh, if error x match uh, w against here, and we need that to go down to 103 as well because it's going to grow to 100. If that's an error, then uh, let's call it a thousand, so that we don't ever uh, miss. So then, if we're seven. Um, well, whether we're seven or not, we're going to say uh, if uh, the turn number uh, is greater than or equal to here. So, sorry, it's greater than there. So we're interested in the two turns after the first bath. So we want that it's greater than that and that it is less than or equal to that plus two. Uh, in that case, zero, otherwise one. And so hopefully that will give us, no, that did not work at all. Why not? Oh, because I'm still on example six, so let's go to example seven. Circular reference, what? Ah, right, 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 right. Yes, so how are we gonna remember? that so yeah, but that first path depends on that that depends on that that's right how did I get around this I don't remember <laughs> I, I'm sure I did it this <clears throat> this way but okay never mind um let's just do first bath so the, basically the issue is that the the columns are depending on each other and this is referencing the entire column so I just need to have something that just looks within each row uh, so what I want is, um, I guess I'll point it to the previous turn. So I want this equals W times uh, count ifs of the turns before that, locking the three so that it expands down, uh, W equals zero. Uh, Oh, sorry, yeah, so I, I need to, um, so then, so now I'm going to say this plus this, then zero, otherwise one. Okay. So that's my first path check, and I want to expand that down to 103 as well. So then that should be all I need to do for level seven. This is actually taking me longer than it took me on the day. I don't know if that's because I'm being sloppier or because I'm taking time to explain. But anyway, let's see if we now get it right. Um, nope, <laughs> we get it all wrong, oh dear. Uh, okay, really? Okay, well, let's take a look at the example because it does help us hopefully spell out an example. So, Mm. Right back to here. So, an example seven, you start in AO7, you go to AQ5, you're in the bath area, 
Yes. So then you don't move the next two turns. Yes. Uh, the next two turns are skipped on turn four. The dog moves to the right, ending up in AS5. Yes, agree with that. Uh, even though the cell is in the bath time area, they don't skip the next turn if they already had a bath. Yes, continues to move around the space on turn 8. They end up in AU11. I agree with. Okay. Uh, continue to move around the space. Turn 8, they end up in, continues to move around the space. On turn 19, they end up in AU11 again. Ah, this could be because of this. Is the median kicking in? 49 plus 3, yes. Median is kicking in. Ah, so, okay. Maybe I needed to fix the... But that... Hmm. Still doesn't explain why all of these are wrong. 024. Did I just link the wrong... I did just link the wrong one. Okay, I have a plan. Uh... Okay, there we go. So I didn't I didn't fix the uh, the example, but there we go. That works. So finally, level eight. I'm actually at my thirty minutes now, so I am going slower than I went on the day. But here we just need to say if uh, the eight on the previous three turns. So we're going to say <coughs> if uh, count ifs uh, the previous three turns. Not great practice to refer to your header rows like this, but I'm not going to change anything else in the model now. Uh, if that is greater than zero, then two, otherwise one. And sorry, I want this to apply only if we're in level eight. Uh, just closing bracket. Okay, that's fine. I think. Let's see. If all of that, then two more. Yes. Okay. Fine. So now let's go to example eight. Uh, copy the multiple, there we go, copy the multiple all the way down, <clears throat> and go to copy these all down, and then hopefully it works, let's just see, we get a 38, which does match the example, and if I actually copy the right 20 values this time, that would also help. No. <laughs> Many wrong answers. What? Honestly, I did better on the day. I don't understand. Uh, all right. I don't know. I'm going to pause the video and take a quick look. Uh, there's probably not a massive value in you watching me debug. Um, but if I can figure out quickly what it is, then I'll tell you. And if I can't, then oh well. Okay, I think I might have figured out what went wrong, and it's the dumbest thing ever. I'm not sure that I hit recalculate. So let's recalculate and see if that helps. Slowly, slowly. Oh yeah, I open up another file to compare again, so it's going to recalculate super slowly because it's doing data tables in both files. Uh, yeah, okay. Huh, this one it still says it's wrong. All right, well, at this point, I'm going to say close enough. Um, the last uh, bonus question asked about how often do dogs end up in the same cell together can consider all the movements to determine how many times two dogs are in the same cell on the same turn. So for that, basically, all you need to do is um, take, take the addresses, the 100 addresses that each dog ends up at. Uh, sorry, the, yes, the 100 addresses that each dog ends up at at the end of each turn and data table that for all uh, 20 different dogs running around and just see how many repeats there are. So I'm not going to do that one now, um, but you get the idea. Anyway, that was a little, uh, little disappointing considering I did worse than I did when I had never seen it before, but sometimes that happens. That's what I got for today. Thanks for watching. See you next time.